In this video, we continue looking at tools used to determine the structures of organic molecules by focusing on mass spectrometry, or MS for short. We'll begin by reviewing the fundamentals of mass spectrometry, or MS. In mass spectrometry, what is going to happen is that you start with a molecule, such as a novel drug candidate, a compound you've synthesized, a compound that you have isolated from the human body, for example. That molecule, using the instrument, mass spectrometer, is going to be ionized. And by definition, when we form an ion out of something, the molecule is going to gain either a positive or a negative formal charge. I'll abbreviate formal charge as FC. We would call that positive ionization mode or negative ionization mode. After the molecule is ionized to form an ion, what is going to happen is that the mass to charge ratio of that ion is going to be measured, resulting in a mass spectrum where the x-axis will show the mass to charge ratio, and the y-axis will show the intensity of the signal, usually normalized to 100% being the strongest signal, 0% being baseline with, with nothing being measured. So in this, just as a reminder, m over z refers to the mass to charge ratio, where m is the mass and z is the charge. It is essential that the compound be ionized because otherwise the charge would be zero and any number over zero is not going to give a measurable value here. In the mass spectrum, what you will see are signals that look kind of like spikes here that correspond to the various mass to charge ratios that are measured here. And I'm gonna show this axis is zero to 500 there as our mass to charge ratios. And what, what these signals will represent, you may be saying to yourself, well, if I'm measuring the mass to charge ratio of a molecule, doesn't it have just one mass to charge ratio if it forms one particular ion? Well, what actually happens is that it forms an ion or ions. And additionally, during the process of mass spectrometry, sometimes the molecule will fragment in other words, break apart into multiple pieces, multiple additional smaller ions during the course of that experiment, resulting in multiple signals being observed in the mass spectrum. And so the mass spectrum generally isn't just one signal, one peak showing up in the spectrum. That would be too simple and too straightforward for chemistry. And so what instead is the case is that there's a signal within the mass spectrum that usually represents the molecular ion and then there are also fragments that are generated as well, where the ion has broken apart due to the fact that the mass spectrometry instrument um, will be bombarding the sample with energy during the course of the experiment, and that will result sometimes in the breakage of weak bonds within the molecule. So what we are generally most interested in for purposes of this class and for most applications of determining complete chemical structures is we're interested in the molecular ion mass to charge ratio. Because the molecular ion mass to charge ratio will allow us to infer the molecular weight of the compound and propose potential molecular formula meaning it would allow us to say, okay, this molecule we propose has a formula of C6H12O6, for example. So hence, the main piece of information that we would get out of a mass spectrum is generally going to be the molecular formula. Now, there are a few different ways to go about ionizing molecules, and depending on how we ionize the molecule, that is going to relate back to how we can use that molecular ion to infer the molecular weight of a compound. So let's take a look at those ways of ionizing organic molecules. A very common way to ionize molecules 
meaning to introduce a formal charge because that's what an ion is by definition, is to place the sample into a solvent that is either acidic or basic. So for example, subjecting the compound to an environment that has a small amount of acetic acid will provide a source of excess protons in order for those molecules to pick up a proton. So to ionize molecules, a common way of doing it, especially in present times with modern equipment and instrumentation, is to use an acid or a base. And an acid being a proton donor will allow the organic molecule to pick up an extra proton and gain a positive formal charge. So for example, with an acid allowing the compound of interest to gain a positive formal charge, we look back at the protonation reactions that we learned throughout the first semester of organic chemistry. For example, an alcohol molecule with its hydroxy group, we commonly saw if we placed an alcohol into an environment with excess protons, what would happen, showing a little mechanism for this, is that the oxygen would use its lone pair of electrons as a base to pick up a proton from the acid, and then the resulting product of that reaction, the organic product of the reaction, would have this extra proton bonded to the alcohol and hence have a positive formal charge. And that allows the compound to be detectable by the mass spectrometer. Whereas our starting structure here, our alcohol, would be invisible to the mass spectrometer because the mass spectrometer requires that a compound have a formal charge, since what it measures is the mass to charge ratio of compounds coming through the detector. Hence, our alcohol itself, invisible to the mass spectrometer, when we put it into an acidic environment so it can pick up a proton, suddenly that product here would be detectable by mass spectrometry. Now, since this molecule has picked up an extra proton, the molecular weight of this molecule plus one, because one is the mass of a single proton, is what we are detecting here as the mass in that mass to charge ratio equation. So we're detecting the molecular weight plus one. When we look at the mass to charge ratio, it'd be the molecular weight plus one divided by the charge Z which would be one or plus one to be specific. So our mass to charge ratio here is the molecular weight plus one divided by one. Hence, to determine what the molecular weight of this compound is, we would just need to subtract one from the mass to charge ratio because this structure had picked up one proton during the course of the experiment. And so subtracting that one proton out would take us back to the molecular weight of the original alcohol. And the cool thing about mass spectrometry is that many modern instruments can read this value, this mass to charge ratio, out to several decimal places, making it what we refer to as high resolution. And with high resolution mass spectrometer, we can match that exact mass with particular molecular formulas using a database and determine what molecular formula matches that high resolution value for the mass to charge ratio to determine what the um, molecular formula of the molecule is. So that's one example of how we can go about commonly ionizing structures. Another, if we think about using a base rather than an acid, in some cases molecules have functional groups that will facilitate them in losing a proton rather than gaining a proton. So if you're working with a carboxylic acid, for example, and you treat that with a base, such as a dilute hydroxide anion solution, you can ionize the carboxylic acid in negative ionization mode by removing a proton. So the lone pair of electrons on the base come over, grab a proton from the acid, that forces the hydrogen-oxygen bond to break and the electrons from that to go onto the oxygen. That is going to result in the formation of this 
conjugate base product that has a negative formal charge now. And that would hence make our structure here on the right detectable by mass spectrometry. And its molecular uh, ion mass to charge ratio, so M over Z for mass to charge ratio, is going to be equal to the molecular weight of the original structure minus one, because we lost a proton from the original carboxylic acid to create this ion. So it's molecular weight minus one divided by the charge there is one. We go with the absolute value there. So we just put one rather than negative one. And hence, the mass to charge ratio that we would detect here is the molecular weight minus one. And so to determine the actual molecular weight of the structure that we started with, the carboxylic acid, you would just take the mass to charge ratio and add one back to it to come up with the molecular weight. And just like in our positive ion mode that we were looking at up top here, in negative ion mode, we also have the opportunity to carry out experiments in high resolution mode, which allows us to read out to several decimal places in evaluating the mass to charge ratio, and we can match that up with a database. So for example, we might say that the mass to charge ratio of this molecule for M minus H, which refers to the molecule as a whole minus one proton, because we lost a proton in the reaction, and then superscript negative indicating that it was negative ionization mode because we were losing a proton during this. We said that the mass to charge ratio of the ion that has lost a proton hypothetically could be 259.34567. And what we could do with that high resolution data, meaning that we're able to read accurately out to several decimal places here, is that... We could compare that to the exact specific expected mass of different combinations of atoms out to several decimal places and use this high resolution data to propose the molecular formula of this molecule based on comparison with the databases that are readily available and out there. So mass spectrometry in modern times is a very, very useful tool for determining the molecular formula of compounds. And that's the main thing that we will be using that for in this class. In fact, in most cases, you'll be given the molecular formula of a compound, understanding that the way that molecular formula came about was that a mass spectrum would be collected for the molecule and the exact mass out to several decimal places compared to a database in order to propose the molecular formula of that ion. So we've talked here about one common way to ionize a molecule being to use an acid or a base, and that is an extremely common and increasingly common method being used today in modern chemistry. There are also some other methods and older school methods that I wanna make you aware of that can also be used to ionize organic molecules to make them suitable for detection by a mass spectrometer. So this is in addition to using acid or base to create that positive or negative formal charge on the molecule. Another strategy for ionization is a technique called electron impact, which is more of an old school method, but still has some applications. And in electron impact, what happens is that the sample, that is the original uncharged molecule, is bombarded with a beam of electrons. And those electrons have quite high energy. And those are going to ionize molecules by knocking one electron out of the structure to enable that structure to take on a formal charge. So the sample is bombarded with a beam of electrons to ionize the compound by removing one electron. So by removing that one electron, the way that we can write this out schematically is that we could say that we have the molecule, which is M, is the original molecule, which has no formal charge, plus 
an electron because the sample is being bombarded with that beam of electrons. And what that beam of electrons is going to do is knock one electron out of the molecule. And so the molecule becomes, we'll put in brackets here as M with brackets around it, it has an unpaired electron and a positive formal charge. And then since that original electron that is being bombarded with has stolen one of the electrons from the molecule, what it becomes is it becomes two electrons or a pair of electrons there that has been ejected. This is a very harsh method of ionization. And as a result, what often happens with this is that it's not possible to leave the molecule intact to detect by mass spectrometry, but instead the molecule is kind of blown to smithereens as, as you might think of it. And so the molecule, oftentimes with electron impact, um, you aren't able to determine the complete molecular formula directly because the molecule does not exist as a single intact ion anymore. Instead, it's a whole assortment of broken up bits and pieces of the molecule that you have to look at the mass spectrum and try to piece back together, but it gets pretty dicey and pretty tricky. So um, for purposes of this class, for problems that you are doing, you will generally be given the molecular formula for a compound. You just need to be aware that the way that molecular formula was determined was through this technique called high resolution mass spectrometry, where the compound was ionized. And then the investigator worked backwards to determine what the molecular weight was and molecular formula of the compound that corresponded to the ion that was detected by mass spectrometry. So in the upcoming videos, what we will do is next few sessions, we will dive into NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, where we will go from our understanding in the last few units of looking at functional groups and looking at molecular weights and molecular formulas to actually determining completely how we stitch together the atoms within the molecule to create complete structures where we know the location of every single atom within that molecule.